Welcome to the Writer's Journey Podcast. I'm Michael Laron, a science fiction and fantasy author on a journey to go from nobody to bestseller, and I'm documenting every step of the way. Tune in every week as I pull back the curtain on my writing life and how I'm building a writing career while working a full-time job, raising a family, and attending law school classes in the evenings. You can find show notes for this week's episode, a free starter library of my fiction, and much more at michaellaron.com. Hello and welcome to episode 105. <laughs> 105 is a good number. And this week I wanted to spend uh, some quick time talking about personal updates. And then I wanted to talk about something that has been in the news quite prominently lately. And I wanted to offer my thoughts on some things that I've observed around the coronavirus, specifically the COVID-19 that seems to have everyone on edge these days. And in personal updates, things are uh, decent. Uh, my basement is done. The contractor finished uh, this past Friday. He came and uh, he got everything done. I've got a brand new wall now. I've got brand new carpet. And um, I've got a plumber coming, I think, on Tuesday to put in um, like a backflow preventer valve so that uh, this kind of thing never happens again or at least isn't on the same scale. So I'm feeling really good about that. It's, it's good to have a basement back, although I haven't done anything down there yet. I'm still kind of in a holding pattern until I do some travel and get back and have a little bit more of a mindset to be able to handle it. It only took about 45 days to get everything up and running again. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to moving back down there and, and doing some rearranging and uh, taking a different approach to how I shoot my videos and how I record my podcasts. And so I'm going to share all of that as it comes up. Um, Book-wise, again, Cold Heart Magic not coming along very well, but um, I'm hoping after this week... Uh, I've, I basically am teaching another insurance class, and actually, as I actually as you listen to this, <laughs> as this goes live, I'll be teaching another class, and it's it's one I haven't taught in the past. So I've had to do a lot of prep work into um, understanding the material and making sure I have clear examples and so on and so forth. And then I have another class that I'm teaching uh, for insurance uh, later this year that I have not taught either. But the good thing is that after this year, I will be to the point where the, the classes that I start teaching next year will all be classes that I've prepared for. So it's kind of a long tail, takes a minute to, to get up to, but uh, the definitely energy I'm expending into this is, is helping me in other areas, namely public speaking and uh, being prepared. And, you know, if and when I decide to do another course for writers, I think all this stuff that I'm doing for these, these courses is going to pay off in dividends. Right compared to the last course that I did, so all, all is well. I'm not terribly concerned about it. Uh, law school's going well. Uh, the nice thing is that we are coming up on spring break, so I only had like a 20 or 30 page reading assignment this week. It was kind of weird. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, who are you and what have you done with my law school professor? <laughs> but yeah, he's like, I'm gonna go easy on you guys for the next two weeks because we're actually ahead of schedule. We've been reading probably too many pages. So that is a good thing as well. Over on my sister podcast, The Writing Tip of the Day, this week we are talking about certain universal truths. There are certain universal truths that I think are always true when it comes to writing. Some things that just never go out of style, things that I think are really good advice, and things that we probably shouldn't ever lose sight of. And so this week on Writing Tip of the Day, I'm talking about five universal truths of writing. And the first day on Monday, we're, we're talking about uh, this idea of success and that success takes time and that uh, you really want to be wary of success that comes knocking on your door very quickly because that could be an indicator of any number of things, but it could also be an indicator of failure, right? You, I, I'm a big believer in slow burn success because I've seen what happens to uh, celebrities and, and other writers that become successful too quickly. And what happens is they tend to choke or they're not prepared to the point where it hobbles their career and, and they make a mistake that uh, they regret later on down the road. So I've taken the opinion of uh, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, do what I do best. And when success comes for me, uh, I'll be ready for it, right? So five universal truths over at Writing Tip of the Day at authorlevelup.com slash writing tip of the day. And you can check that out. And that's really my topic of the episode this week. 
And it's a, un, un, I was thinking about universal truths this weekend when I was looking at the news and I was looking at the impacts that uh, this, this coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, seems to be having all over the world. And uh, it's definitely escalated over the past week. Last Thursday, uh, my wife and I were able to go to the grocery store and buy toilet paper and hand sanitizer. <laughs> this past Thursday, or this Thursday, we were not able to do that. In fact, there are limits on toilet paper. There are limits on certain items like paper towels and hand. You can't even find hand sanitizer, to be honest with you. Uh, Clorox wipes don't even exist uh, in any of the stores that I've been to. And we, we happened to be at the grocery store, and I noticed um, a lot of people buying a lot more than they, they usually were buying. So like shopping carts were full of just stuff. I mean, food. And I mean, it was like people were shopping for Armageddon, you know, and and that got me thinking, okay, this is, uh, this is, this has gotten a little bit more serious now. (laughs) And um, if you're not paying attention, it's definitely time to start paying attention. And the first thing I think of when when I think of this coronavirus stuff is I think of two things first. The first thing I think about is how is this going to affect life on the job, right? Because all all of us work at companies and um, your company may have or may have not have already uh, put together some sort of a coronavirus strategy, right? So like my company has suspended all travel, international and domestic travel. There are certain things that they're not paying for, certain things like any conferences or um, in-person meetings, all of those have been canceled. So there's there's an immediate impact there. So I, I think about that. And then I also think about Will this affect book sales? And I think a lot of people are probably thinking about this. You know, there hasn't been a, quite a pandemic like this. I mean, the, the the one that people refer to as SARS, right, or MERS, that was, um, but what about a decade ago? And I don't know. I, I think in in self publishing, as a self publisher, I, I look at this through the lens of an author, right? Has there been anything similar to this in the past? And I, I think the answer is probably yes. But I think that the self-publishing segment of the publishing industry is untested, meaning we haven't been through a catastrophic uh, event or a downturn that has seriously affected authors yet. Uh, I've said this a number of times on my show. Uh, I've said this a number of times on my YouTube channel. Uh, We just haven't been through it yet. We haven't been through a, a recession, really, since self-publishing as we know it has taken off. So what would that do? Because I this this past weekend, there have been a lot of articles and a lot of speculation. And some of this is just kind of irresponsible speculation, in my, in my opinion, by a lot of pundits. But it, it's, it's well, if, if this coronavirus thing continues, then we, we could be looking at a recession. I, I think maybe that's a, a bit of a stretch. I mean, it, certainly it has a global impact. Certainly, um, if you look at SARS compared to this, uh, we're a lot more globalized and a lot more interconnected than we are when when the SARS epidemic hit, right? So is it possible? Yeah, it, it is potentially possible. But of course, that gets people really, really scared. I looked at the SARS. I, I looked it up on, on um, a, a number of various different sources. And the SARS outbreak started in November 2002, and it ended somewhere around July 2003. So that was about nine months. If, if, if that's true of this, that this coronavirus thing started around November 2019, if, it, if, it, if it's just like the last time, then we could be at the epicenter of it. We could be at the height of uh, how bad this is going to get. Or we could just be at the very beginning of it. I, I think it's too soon to say. Um, but I, I think, and this is just my own personal opinion. I, I think one of the defining things of this era that we live in, of a hyper-connected internet and um, highly globalized society, is that the, one of the great things about the internet is that you can find information very quickly. One of the bad things about the internet is that you don't know the quality of the information that you're looking at. And I think that it is it has become increasingly difficult to know if what you're looking at is truth, or if what you're looking at is untruth, or if you're, what you're looking at is somewhere in between. Um, I think that's going to be the defining 
theme of this era because I, I think you can turn on the news and, and every news cycle is just so different. And, and news cycles last 24 hours now, whereas they just, they just weren't that way when I was growing up, right? And um, everyone is getting news and they're getting uh, information all of the time, right? And everyone's reality and everyone's world is different. And so the news that you're getting is different than the news that I'm getting. And if you don't know the quality of, of the information you're getting, it, it, it can be really hard to navigate and, and make decisions um, right now because everything is just so uncertain. You know, you turn on the news and there's something, something new about Trump or there's something new about the Democratic primaries. And then you've, and right now you've got the coronavirus and then there's, there's stocks and you know, it, it just, it just seems like it never ends. And so older, the older I get, <laughs> the more I, I realize the importance of time and how the passage of time is uh, perhaps one of the most important tools that we have instead of making decisions in the moment. Maybe sometimes the best thing to do is nothing. Maybe sometimes the best thing to do is to sit back and wait, right? So if I were an author, I probably wouldn't be making any rash decisions right now around coronavirus. Um, I, I would be looking at the major indicators to me. Um, the major indicators uh, would be traditional publishers. How are they responding to this? And I think internally, they're watching it very carefully. Um, certainly, uh, the London Book Fair, I, I think a lot of traditional, I think London Book Fair got canceled, but the reason it was canceled was because a lot of uh, publishers and I think Ingram, they all pulled out because they were concerned about the, you know, the spread of the coronavirus. So they're, they're certainly concerned about that. I, I Certainly, um, I think if you, you looked at any traditional publisher internally, they're probably suspending travel. Uh, they're probably taking a look at their supply chain and um, I don't know, I don't know how, how much of their operations are located in China, for example. That That's problematic. Um, but right now, they seem to be in a holding pattern. And then there does not seem to be any huge impact. But I would be curious to see what their quarterly sales are going to be like. I would also look uh, to Amazon to see what Amazon is doing. And Amazon seems to be pretty quiet on this right now, right? So their their biggest problem at this point is the price gouging. Right. There's a lot of people selling hand sanitizer for like $200. <laughs> They're trying to crack down on that. A lot more people are staying home. So I, you know, I think this is probably ultimately going to be a pretty good thing for Amazon. Not necessarily something that's going to be bad for them. You know, one of the things that I always think about with Amazon is if they start going into dire financial straits or if, if they start seeing uh, losses as a result of whatever it is, I've always wondered what their what their reaction is going to be to KDP, right? Because if you think about a corporation, a, a lot of times things are, are permitted to exist in a very, very large business because it's not losing money, right? And I don't know what the, the financial status of KDP is, but I think compared to Amazon's, the rest of their operations, it's probably not a huge moneymaker like it was, say, 10 years ago you know, with the advent of the Kindle, right? So, you know, I've always wondered about that and, and what Amazon would do if they're in a position where they're losing money and they've got to start making some cuts. What would happen to the KDP program? Would they eliminate it? Probably not. But would they slash royalties? Maybe. Would they take away resources and staff? Possibly. So that's the thing I would be looking at as a self-publisher, especially if you're in Kindle Unlimited, is how's Amazon reacting to this? And, and there does not seem to be any adverse reaction at this point. Um, another thing I would look at is at Silicon Valley, right? How is Silicon Valley responding to this? Again, all seems pretty quiet there. I think that the, the, the only news I've seen uh, from them right now is that Facebook is uh, taking some actions regarding, uh, I think, advertising and things like that. Or, or there was some something I saw on Facebook that they were uh, doing, but it didn't seem to be terribly serious. Uh, I also think that Silicon Valley has a direct impact on self-publishers and uh, what we do because our entire business model really exists on the back of Silicon Valley. If you think about KDP, uh, that's technology. Uh, if you think about, and I shouldn't say Silicon Valley itself, but just technology in general. So like if you look at distributors like uh, draft to digital and smash words and all I mean that's all technology driven if you look at uh, a lot of services that exist now for writers uh, that are uh, helping writers deliver 
uh, books to their readers or deliver value to their readers. All that is built on the back of technology, right? And so uh, I would look at Silicon Valley to see if that's going to impact us. And right now it doesn't seem like there's anything that's going to impact writers. And then the last indicator I would look at is what are vendors doing? So like the, the, the different vendors that serve writers, uh, the, the, the places that do promos, the places that provide apps for writers, the places that provide services for writers, our editors, our cover designers, what are they doing right now? And, and the answer is, it's just business as usual. Here, here's, here's what I would not look at. I would not look very much at your book sales, you know, because book sales go up and down, you, you don't, you know, nine times out of 10, you never know what causes them to go up or down. So I wouldn't look at book sales as an indicator of anything. Just this is my personal opinion. I also wouldn't really put a whole lot of stock on author groups and, and people saying, oh, my book sales are down or, you know, just I try to avoid that as much as possible. That just is it, it's this nasty, vicious cycle that I just don't want anything to do with. <laughs> so I, I tend not to look at author groups too much. I look at the real indicators. Right. Um, and I think that our goal in any kind of um, pandemic or uh catastrophic thing that is a threat to either humanity or a threat to the markets or a threat to um, us personally is to remain consistent in writing and then to remain relevant. So how do you weather this storm if there is a storm while being able to continue your regular pace of books, right? Writing and publishing books. Um, How do you continue to make money And then how do you continue to write books that people care about and that people want to buy? I think that's our ultimate goal. Don't lose sight of that, despite whatever the hysteria is on that. Your goal is to remain consistent and relevant and to to ensure that you can continue publishing books. So, you know, I'm coming back to this and I'm sure somebody was probably going to predict it. You could probably drink. You, you You could have like a drinking contest every time I mention Uh, the word contingency planning. (laughs) Okay, I'm making fun of myself here. But I did pull out my contingency plan this weekend. And one of the things I was looking at uh, were just a few of the different contingencies, right? So the biggest thing to think about with this coronavirus or COVID-19 is obviously getting the virus, right? It it seems like it's a, a really bad version of the flu, right? So as far as mortality goes, unless you're very old, very young, or very sick already, you're probably not going to be too bad, right? The probably the worst thing you're going to have to deal with is quarantine, uh, being home, and if you are uh, in a job that requires you to be there, then that is potentially a problem, right? But you know, you're just going to get sick. Um, an- another thing you have to worry about is the illness uh, or the illness getting into someone that you love, or, or you know, that that's another issue, right? Because then that's going to take time away from your writing. Um, to take care of them and make sure that they get the health that or the health care that they need. Um, second thing or the third thing is job trouble, right? So uh, that's something that I think a lot of people have to think about is do you have enough sick days at work? Um, what's your what's your employer's response to this sort of thing? What if you get the virus? you know, are you gonna have a job when you come back? I mean, these are all things that uh, I would be thinking about. Um, also, if there is a recession, you know, how do you respond to that? How do we as authors respond to that? That's a, a can of worms that I'm not going to open. But, you know, I, I think now is the, probably the time to be saving more money than you're spending, if possible, if, if you're able to do that. I know that in the first six years of my writing business, I was spend, spend, spend because I needed to develop a presence. And I needed, I, there were a lot of things I needed to develop to get my business off the ground. And now I'm kind of in a... Uh, spend and save kind of deal where I'm not spending as much as I spent in the year before, for example, but my royalties are going up. So I'm in a position where I'm able to start saving some of that. Uh, If you are in a position to do that, um, definitely start saving some money for contingencies and rainy days um, and, and some things that can help you get through some things that might happen, right? So like, for example, if there's a pandemic, what will happen is, is schools are going to close, um, a lot of a lot of workplaces are going to say work from home. You're not really going to want to go outside very much, and so are you prepared for that? You know, I mean, 
as a writer, I think it's easy because if you're at home, you can write books. <laughs> I mean, if you're not working, of course. But, you know, one of the things I, I've always thought is, is important to think about with something like this is not so much getting, getting the virus, but I think the more important thing is how much, uh, how much attention is this taking away from the main thing? So, like, this weekend, I think a lot of people were probably, like me, consuming a lot of coronavirus content, right? What, what could they have been consuming instead of this coronavirus content? And so I went on Amazon, and I looked at the bestsellers just to see, you know, there's probably some books that are soaring sky high right now regarding this. And there was one book on the great influenza that was like, I think, number 50. There was another book on value investing, which I think is probably directly related to this because a lot of people are looking at the markets and so on and so forth. But other than that, not much. The big thing I think will happen with this right now is that a lot of people's attention is just going to be elsewhere, right? It's going to be on their health. It's going to be on making sure they don't get this. And so might it have a impact on your book sales in the short term? Yes. In the long term, you know, probably not, right? So there, there's some good things about our industry, right? The first is that you never have to quit publishing. So if the worst thing were to happen and, and whatever it is, whether it be pandemic or you get sick or something else happens, you don't have to quit publishing. You can always continue writing. And even if you have to take a break, you can always pick up where you left off. You really don't lose anything other than momentum, but you can get that momentum back. You know, once it goes away, that doesn't mean it's gone forever, right? You can always write, and nobody can stop you from publishing. Um, it's not like it's not like if you, if you owned a flower shop, and no one comes and buys your flowers, and therefore you have to go out of business. You know, it, it, it's it's not. There's never any end to an author's career unless you either die or you choose to not do it anymore. So I think that's the good thing about the industry that we're in. Um, I also think. Uh, as far as bad things go, again, we haven't been battle tested yet, and that day is going to come. I don't know that this will be it. Maybe it will, but maybe it won't. But if you have not prepared for that, if you are not thinking about what you would do in a recession, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about what your response would be uh, what, what your response would be if uh, a number of the different vendors that you work for or that you work with or, or services that you use were to go out of business today. Just think about that. What would you do? You know, are there alternative vendors that you can pick? Um, these are, I think, important questions that you want to ask. Do you have enough money in your uh, commercial savings to publish your next book or your next few books? if there were to be a recession? Or uh, are you going to have to work more? What happens if you lose your job? You know, are you going to be able to, because a lot of, I think a lot of people pay for their books out of their own pocket. So are you going to be able to afford editing if you no longer have a job? Are you going to be able to get that cover designed if you no longer have a job? What happens if you are a full-time writer and your book sales decrease as a result of a, of a recession? Are you going to be able to continue being a full-time writer, or are you going to have to get a job somewhere? Like these are the things that people probably aren't thinking about that much, but you really want to think about uh, because when that day comes, I honestly don't know what will happen to our industry in a recession. I'm kind of curious to find out what will happen because I'm I I think there, there's some theories that I have in my head about what will happen that I won't say publicly, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. But what I want you to, to do is to be prepared for it. So, you know, I, I'll, I'll plug my contingency planning again. I've got a, it's like a, a set of flashcards at authorlevelup.com slash contingency planning. You can check that out if you're interested. And again, I, I ask all of you to stay safe, um, practice good hygiene, if you're feeling sick, stay home. Uh, certainly don't infect other people. And uh, don't, do, don't go too crazy at the grocery store. <laughs> um, hopefully, uh, hopefully we're at the height of this epidemic and it passes. And if we're not, you know, if, if we do happen to be in for a long ride, um, I think things are going to be okay from a publishing perspective, at least in the short term. So with that, I hope everybody is doing great. And I will holler at you next time. Thanks for joining me this week. If you enjoyed this episode, you'll enjoy my backlist episodes at michaelaron.com slash podcast. 
For your free starter library of my favorite novels, join my fan club by visiting michaelleron.com slash fan club. If you're a writer and want to connect with me further, check out my YouTube channel, Author Level Up, for helpful writing advice at authorlevelup.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll be back next week.